so it was it was an amazing amazing experience um we were blessed with good legal ultimately that helped guide us through the process because like I, again there were no agents to help us at that time uh and i will say the only thing was that we were so new and we were so vested in our project we didn't understand the, the we didn't actually understand that while we were on that wave that we needed to be developing other things and we needed to think about broader a, a broader position for ourselves in a market like new york at la so like after finally delivering that show it took us a couple of years to really develop something else that would make it to the screen because we also were in atlanta in a small very small market at that time so we went through these ebbs and flows, like just trying to survive um, because of being, doing something. It's funny, funny, like you come out the gate so big, it's hard to be able to do the steps back. And people have like big expectations. So we ultimately, we went a few years. We, you know, it would be like two years. Then we did something else. We did a big show with Will Packer and Rob Hardy called Sprite Step Up. We did that in 2009, I think it was. So, again, I had been hearing about Tracy Baker Simmons as an amazing producer, especially since I was living in Atlanta. She had been doing music videos and all other types of production. At the time, she had a partner named Wanda Shelley, who was also equally amazing. So, Will and I had just come off this movie called Stomp the Yard Homecoming. It was, it was the uh, sequel to Stomp the Yard. And we got this opportunity to do a reality show for Sprite called the Sprite Step Off. It was like the step show competition show. Ludacris was the host and everything like that. So we need to partner with some amazing producers that can help us get this done because we've never worked on doing a reality show together. So we reached out to uh, Tracy. Um, she and Wanda, you know, came and partnered with us to make that happen. Amazing. She was smart. She was prepared. She uh, was personable. She was accountable. Not only that, they traveled, her team traveled to Texas. Her team traveled to, I think it was Arkansas, uh, Florida. They set up everything in Atlanta and we delivered all the shows to MTV2. Not only that, it was MTV2's highest rated series, new series for that year. That show is actually in the African American Museum of uh, in Smithsonian in DC. So it's kind of interesting that we always have these things that are very important to the culture that we were able to produce. I work with a lot of producers, directors, um, people who held that, that position. And I watched her interact um, with her talent and get them to do things that other people could not have them be able to open up and do. I watched her negotiate. I've watched her interact with her, her other colleagues. And to me, she's like a, a cut above what other producers and directors are because of the other interpersonal skills that she has. In between developing projects, our, our new projects and things like that, I was offered an opportunity to teach, um, teach actually film producing uh, at, Emory University at the business school there, at the Gorziana Business School. Um, and that was really interesting because I never thought or I never thought of myself as wanting to be a teacher. But when the opportunity presented itself from the dean at the school, I, I jumped on it and it really like showed me something else that I love. Like as much as I was passionate about producing, I also realized that, you know, that, it, that the teaching was important to me. And then ultimately people started to remind me that you, you did have an extensive internship program <laughs> at your company. Uh, and it was true. I really, I like learning and I also like to make sure when people are around me that they learn as well. So that is important to me. I truly love Tracy. I worked for her about 20 years ago and I can't begin to explain how much I learned from her about how projects get done, whether it's a music video or a documentary or a feature, whether you're pitching t television programs, uh, series, whatever, just knowing that she had an unbelievable ability to pierce through a lot of the noise and figure out 
This is our sizzle that we're gonna sell, and this is our steak that we're gonna serve. The whole foundation of my career, you know, it, it comes from Tracy. I knew nothing about film, television, cameras, anything. She hands me a TV camera. Matter of fact, that camera is here today. It's that camera right there. It's this camera right here. She puts this in my hand. And she tells me to take it home and play with it. So I took this thing home. I didn't know what any of these buttons meant. I didn't know how to use it. I didn't even really know how to take the battery out of it. But I took it home and I would, you know, turn it on and, and press record and I would shoot bumblebees. I would shoot raindrops falling. I would shoot leaves blowing down the street. I would fill up these little cassette tapes that go in here with just stuff <laughs> until I really figured out how to use this thing. And then Tracy would give me um, projects. Well, I don't know if she would give me projects, but we had projects. She would, she, we always had this board in the office that had you know lists of, of all the different projects that we wanted to create or either we're working on or we're in pre-production or production or post-production. It was a, you know, a chart of what they were, what they, what stage they were in. And I would always be on the development stuff. You know, I would go out with her and we would shoot for hours. She'd make me hold the camera. I'd have to shoot everybody. I'm the only camera out there with the only camera. It's like 16 kids. <laughs> and, you know, she's making me hold this camera for like, you know, hours at a time. Just uh, you know, getting my weight up, um, and she, you know, she would just you know give me little tidbits of you know what to do. She would tell tell me that I'm making her dizzy, you know, if I'm moving the camera too much or something like that. And um, that's how I learned. That's how I learned how to be an op. What I value most about my mom is that she's open to dreaming, and I feel like a lot of people don't have that aspect with their mother figures. Is that they're like oh, you have this job and you stick to it and you can't dream or you can't have ambitions for other things. And I feel like she's very open to that, whether it's starting your own company or doing your own show or vice versa or doing really whatever you want to do. She kind of lets you have that dream and helps you create what you want in a sense. My son was graduating high school in 2011, and I was really at this space in my head where I just needed to get out of Atlanta. And it was feeling landlocked, and I just was like tired of the fight. And um, I just sort of, my sister was living in New York and working in fashion. And again, where my mama said, living in Atlanta or New York, I decided to take up you know, let's go try out, try out New York and really see what this landscape was that I felt like I was missing a bit. Um, I came back and forth for a bit for, between New York and Atlanta and had meetings with different companies and networks and landed at a company called Jared Creative. They were, they were fairly new. They, they had actually both worked at networks, one in, at MTV and Oxygen which was actually a big part of the landscape in the production world. Once I got here, I realized in the reality space, a lot of production company owners were people who had worked at networks and then started their own company, which could then explain one and I was disadvantaged because we had never worked at a network and we had this company. So I went to work with them and I helped them to actually really build their development department and to do some branding for their company as well. And uh, we, the first year out the gate, honestly, I think we showed like seven or eight shows. We did a show called Boston's Finest, uh, Alaska Women Looking for Love, and I Killed My BFF. And that franchise actually, um, actually turned into them being able to do films with that. And I was with them from 2011 to right around 2014. What I really appreciate about Tracy and what she brings to the table as a producer is experience. She's able to adapt the things that she has worked on from the time that she was a music producer in the 90s to now as a thriving reality reality um, television producer. After Whitney passed and we did the show, The Houston's on Our Own, the Jarrett's actually partnered with Wanda and I on that show. 
So after leaving the Jarrett's, I began to do some consulting. I actually did some consulting, went back and did some consulting for them in the development department. Um, and I've been doing that with other producers and companies. I've also been working as a co-EP on various shows with big or difficult talent because people feel that I'm such, I don't know, when I worked with the Jairus, we used to call me the talent whisperer. Uh, so I think that reputation has preceded me. I think when it came to Tracy and dealing with talent, I think it was definitely a special gift that she had. Um, not everybody can deal with talent because it's it's a fine line you have to keep when you're dealing with talent. You have to try to keep them on track and keep it professional, but at the same time, understand and meet their needs. And she was really good at doing that because, yes, she had the producer cap to work, but at the same time, she understood them as people. I admire her like skill set to keep cool, in a sense. Because a lot of people, like, when she works with talent, like, most of them are, like, people that most people consider to be, like, uber and super famous. And with that being a part of it, like, you have to understand that these people have egos and different ways they do stuff. And the fact that she really can go in any genre of anything and kind of jump into it and be able to not only just work with the talent and get the job done, but she can also make deals and kind of like break bread and make it a simpler process than you see most of the time. So Tracy, you see this package, you know, she looks like a little fireball, right? But I say like she has this perfect combination of Southern hospitality and Metro mogul. So it's basically like she comes in with this, you know, this, this very warm, friendly uh, demeanor, but at the same time, she can boss up on you. And I, I like that because in a lot of, you know, I think that separates her as a producer um, because she's able to, to be able to build relationships with people, but at the same time, hold her own as a producer. So it's the perfect marriage because she's really actually quite unsuspecting <laughs> when she goes into those rooms. Uh, but that's the thing that I, I appreciate because when you start talking about anything that's telling story, you have to have somebody who can connect with people, but at the same time, have the same, have uh, the swagger to be able to do business. And that's who she is in a nutshell. One word that I would use to describe Tracy is passionate and compassionate. Just two words. But what I mean by that is her passion for the project that she's involved in, but her compassion for the people behind the lens and the crew and all the people that make this thing work and her people and the people in front of the lens. And to me, all those attributes are extremely important because it creates a very just cohesive, and warm and safe, friendly environment for the people that have to perform that are in front of the camera, but also it makes the people that are behind the camera want to be there. And I think that's one of Tracy's, you know, best attributes. Definitely at this point in time, I'm like just reflecting back on, you know, this journey and realizing that my path has been not a conventional one at all. I realized that I have a lot more to offer even with emerging technology and just new ways that people are consuming content. I want to continue to produce, not just in reality space, but in back getting back to my original roots of scripted television and film. But I also want to give back. And I do feel like there is a void in the market space for someone to really come in and show people how to develop and create reality television and then I'm a good candidate for that I have the experience I have the knowledge and God knows I've had the bumps and bruises to just really 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 be able to lay it out there for individuals <clears throat> and help them to hopefully not make some of the same mistakes I've made but if nothing else just sort of see their dreams and realize their dreams to come as I am continuing to push towards having other dreams of my own come to pass I would say, a lot of people would say, well, she has a lot of courage. I don't think she has a lot of courage. Courage, courage means that you do things even though you're scared. 
in spite of something else, in spite of adversities. Tracy was destined to do this. She was always determined to make something of herself to figure out what she wanted to do and what she did well, and just do it. If people wonder why Tracy Baker Simmons is where she is, it's because of her work ethic and her honesty. And she ain't gonna, she ain't gonna push her. Like she's a businesswoman. She's a strong black businesswoman. What I think people should really know about Tracy is that her ability to um, create and nurture projects to fruition is, I think it's just God given. It's just what she was supposed to do. It's, it's in her, it's her nature. I don't think it, it's a skill she developed. She just uses every part of her character and her personality um, and her spirit to manifest um, visual art. And, and it's just second nature to her. If I were to boil down to one word, uh, Tracy Baker Simmons, that word would be powerful. She has been an, incredible power, an incredibly powerful force in my life. She's been an incredibly powerful producer who I've watched go out into the world and make her way. When doors have been closed, I've watched her kick them down. You do not want to be an obstacle in her path. And I respect that about her because plain and simple, if you're gonna be a black woman producer, you better be powerful. You better be plenty strong. And she is that. And she was all the more needing to be that 20 years ago when we were doing the work. And she was plenty tough and strong then. She's single, Tracy is single-handedly the most inspirational person in my life. By seeing that Tracy was able to be both a hardcore, focused, professional woman and be a great mom really helped me shape how I thought that my career then could be. That it is possible to do both. And it will never be easy in both places, but you can have a career and be a mom, especially in the entertainment industry. You just have to work harder than everyone else. But as a woman, you're working pretty hard anyway. I learned from her uh... A lot of lessons, a lot of things that I think about throughout my weeks, my months, my days, you know, come from Tracy Baker Singh. One of the first things Tracy gave me was uh, a notebook, this notebook to be exact. Um, yes, I still have this, it's going everywhere with me. Um, I remember graduating college and I left it in a lab <laughs> and one of my classmates um, grabbed it for me and he moved to New York. He had this notebook for four years, and wow. it wasn't until I went to New York, met up with him for a drink, and he brought it, and I didn't know he had it. I thought I was going, um, thought he had, I didn't know where I left it, but he was like, um, I have your notebook. And I was, got to looking through all these pages, I'm like, dang. And it's like, this goes all the way back to 2008, like the first notes of everything, past shows, ideas she was working on, uh, that she had me checking on, but it was just like, wow, it's crazy. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna hold this one forever. This is, this is not going anywhere. Tracy is a mountain. You know? She's everybody's rock. She's beautiful, going places. She's smart, big, big dreams. And so I, I, uh, Told I say, well, whatever dreams you got, I dream with you. I think my mom is a brilliant boss lady. Being even considered a pioneer in any genre, any sector of this business is a those are big shoes to fill. But and then when you look at it, you think, okay, so I was a pioneer, and then what? But I know that I'm not stopping until I'm certainly stamped in this business as the ultimate icon. I'm Tracy Baker Simmons, and this is my journey.
Hey guys, thanks for checking out my channel. And if you want to follow my journey and learn more about the producer life, make sure you subscribe, like this video, press the bell for post notifications, because you don't, you really don't want to miss any of this good stuff. I'm going to have you behind the scenes, before the scenes, after the scenes, prepping the scenes, and all kinds of things that happen in my world. Press down below. Let's go. Like, share, and subscribe. See you soon.